really? that point before we explain who you are, what you do, which is how is it even possible to get down on a floor and get back up without just like having to lie down for six hours after just to kind of like loosen your back up again? How do you That's avoid intensive. your body just cracking when you get up from a position that you sat in for too long? Oh, wow. I mean, frankly, like a large portion of it is just luck, you know, <laughs> like, <laughs> how am I going to do today? Uh, well, I feel like you're segueing me into saying like some sort of physical conditioning regimen might be something one could do. To Are potentially... you into physical conditioning? Um, I dabble. I do. I dabble. You dabble in physical yeah. conditioning? I dabble in physical conditioning. <laughs> yeah. So... Well, this is the big reveal, which is, so some context for you. In some past experiences on the show, some of us, not going to name names, uh, may have gone hard Stuck. on big fucking nerds, um, of which we've established I am one of them. But you know, it's like it's like people who are like like race traders. You know, you're you're that you're ashamed to be what you are, and you just absolutely throw your own people to the wolves. Okay. And I've done that with the big nerds. You've thrown your fellow compatriots under the bus that's right oh, okay. so you're on notice nerds because the jocks are now in the room there's oh, supposed yeah. to be two of them and yeah that's right yeah yeah so let's get into that because so you ian yes that's my name his yeah. name we've not said yeah yet. i was gonna i was gonna say that for myself but thank you for <laughs> thank you for that <laughs> so you co-own your your independent business your local business with your partner. Yep, that's right. Yeah, me and Sam own uh, Spiraling Upward Fitness. Mm -hmm. And uh, we turned our home into kind of like a private studio right. where we could train people. Um, big motivation for that was obviously the, the good old pandy there. So we, the gyms are open and closed like constantly, as I'm sure everyone knows, right? And uh, it was kind of like an alternative strategy for to obviously keep working and making money, but also keeping people training. Mm -hmm. uh, probably the past few years have been the absolute worst in history for people's general well-being and fitness levels kind of thing. Because, I mean, there's an uncertainty yeah. whether you can go to the gym or whatever. Worst in and, history? Sorry? Worst in history? Worst in history. Yeah, recorded, recorded history. Man, yeah. I was I used to read it history books be. and be like, I'm so glad I didn't people. grow up during like the Black Death. But like, I guess as long as they were swole, they were having a good time. Right? Yeah. I mean, oh, their yeah. bellies were swollen. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, their organs were swollen. Wow, it uh, really is hard for us in the future. I really like to imagine like a Renaissance painting of like people with the Black Death, but just, just fucking like, just so yoked. Yeah, and just yeah. Like... it's just like a, a, a like a <laughs> Greek a for sort these. of aesthetic. Where... Yeah, yeah, exactly. They're just super super well, ripped. I so... mean, if you like strategically place pustules, they will look like muscles, right? <laughs> Eventually, yeah, I guess, yeah, yeah, I guess. So. Eventually, um, so the thing about the pandemic is that I felt like I was sent a message from a higher power because. Um, the, the pandemic really started kicking off in like February, January, February kind of area of what, 2019 now? God, it's been so funny. 2020. Yeah. Yes, 2020. Um, and, uh, so I got a gym membership in January because I was like, I've been drinking too much and I need to actually start like <laughs> reproportioning my body a little bit. Redistributing the yeah. mass. Yeah. yeah it, like, moving yeah. it around yeah, a little bit. Shuffle it around. Like, and so I went a couple times and I was like, wow, this fucking hurts and i don't <laughs> like it very much but i need to do it and then the pandemic hit and i was like well yeah I, now i don't have to do it anymore. oh yeah yeah <laughs> man yeah that's like a lot of a lot of people viewed it in that way too yeah oh like, yeah ah, well well the gyms yeah, are closed, it's closed. It's closed. Yeah. what am i gonna do i can't, I can't, I can't home i can't work at I work out at home yeah. I, I i have beer there that'd be weird yeah, what if my children see me <laughs> <laughs> don't want them getting the wrong idea yeah that's right yeah like there's definitely no gym equipment in my house um, there's nothing I could do <laughs> to like help my well-being there. It's you know, it's yeah. it's a completely hopeless situation. Yeah, so yeah. yeah, like, I mean, there's there's no real in between between absolutely keeping yourself at the peak of function and just like losing yourself in Rimworld or, or Stardew Valley for for eight hours, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah no, I still. Every time you talk about Rimworld, I just can't. 
I know, I know. <laughs> man. I think of the same thing you think of, I'm pretty sure. But... <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. But yeah, no, I guess uh, that was definitely something that was like a little upsetting about this entire pandemic thing. It was like, I was finally gonna do it but then i was like well if i really oh, wanted I to do it i wouldn't i, I would have just done it at home yeah because now i have a gym in my apartment building and i'm like still still kind of i should probably go down there at some point yeah <laughs> yeah i know well it was like we started I, I started training like about a year before pandemic hit yeah and i was just that's, starting... that's when you started working out first time ever. yeah first time yeah. and like ever <laughs> since then it's just been great and not uh i'll, I'll start, start with that one uh and I was like an external trainer at the Kinsman. Oh, okay. training people there. And then like, once I got started with that, it was like two months and then pandemic, gyms closed, blah, blah, blah. And then for the longest time, uh, the Kinsman wouldn't even allow external trainers to come in. Like they just had the city of Edmonton trainers come in. Yeah. So we were on like, we were just like, oh, wait, 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 wait. But all of our clients from there, man, they're like, what do we do? What the fuck? <laughs> and like, like, and I'm like, in about a month, we should be able to go. Cause like we, you'd get like, yeah exactly. a notice or whatever and then yeah but it never never really happened i think there's like a month or whatever and then it's shut down again and then, yeah it was ridiculous so it left a lot of people like stranded especially like if you're yeah just like you right you're just getting started yeah and then like another obstacle kind of put itself in your way which makes then, it really easy to just say like to hell with it yeah, yeah. plus like, we didn't see anyone so like no one would even know it's like i'm just gonna get you know yeah totally i'm, I'm totally. just yeah i'm just gonna destroy my body yeah. with drugs and alcohol exactly yeah yeah so like two years yeah so it's really hard to keep people accountable and like engaged with it because yeah and there's only so much you can do over zoom as well mm -hmm. like especially for like training it's like uh like pretty like technical when i'm working with people like about body movements and stuff like that and it's just like i don't know if someone has like this like camera a, yeah like a, <laughs> a like kelly webcam a kelly webcam or whatever it's like okay your squats look amazing because you're literally teleporting from one position <laughs> to the next uh, so yeah like you i mean you put someone on a cam like this and you're like i don't know in what kind of shape you're in <laughs> and you have to assume they're doing great yeah that's right yeah or right. that they're like a digital ai or something like <laughs> they just want to get yoked yeah, so the right for the singularity. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but it's it's it sounds like this whole like endeavor was a pretty collaborative effort, right? Between me and Sam. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I started training in like a LA Fit. Right. That was the first job I had, and it was just terrible, absolutely horrible. I had zero control over like how I trained people, and like how much I got paid. It was like it was man, it's really bad. Um, uh, some other gyms are probably better, but at LA Fit, they uh, were paying the trainers for half hour sessions, seven dollars and fifty cents. Oh Jesus! Yes. So if yeah. you had two back to back, you could make the minimum wage. Oh, lovely. Yeah. If if you did that, so like you're making like no money. Yeah. And uh, I found like the the whole like sales side of the the team there was just very, very intentionally deceiving to people about like what they're getting, what they're paying for. Yeah. And then like as a trainer, started like training them on the floor and they're like, What what do you mean the session's only half an hour? I'm like, Yep. And they're like, I thought it was an hour. And it's like, Nope, it's, no. they're all half an hour. And he's like, Well, what the heck? They cost like ninety dollars. Yeah, you're for... like, dude, I yeah. know. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, dude, I know, I know. And like I found like a lot of their business to be like really slimy and un unethical. This, so this session like, sponsored like, by yeah. LA Fitness. Yeah, fucking yes. <laughs> I, hate, I hate that place. So they uh, so they were charging the customers ninety dollars an hour, and you were getting seven fifty. I'm not too sure. Uh, it was oh. like for a package of like ten. I actually didn't even really know what the prices were um, because like they'll they'll just change them when they're doing like a consultation with a, someone. They'll come in. I was like, oh, we really want you to come. And it's like, no, oh, I can't really do eighty bucks per session. I'm like, oh, let me see what I can do. And he like just like on his keyboard. He's like, ah, oh, okay, we can bring it down to the. So I I actually don't even know. Uh, but it was in that range, like sixty to ninety dollars per session, per, per half hour mm -hmm. session, and like, yeah, yeah. and we, yeah, and we got seven dollars and fifty cents of that. So cute. So yeah, very. It's adorable. And um, so then exploitative uh, tactics. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah. So uh, anyways, it was like I just external training at the Kinsman, so I had like a framework for 
how I can do business. I can like, I, I make the terms. And then uh, when the Kingsman closed down, I was like me and Sam, so that's my partner and co-owner. Mm -hmm. We're just like, we don't want to stop training, especially people who are like making progress. Like they'd never been working out before. And it's like, yeah, I'm finally like doing it. And we're like, yeah. And like, it's really sad to see like people make progress and then just like it goes away. Right. And that happened like five or six times this year. Cause even we got shut down. Um, and then, so we were like, fuck it. Like, we'll just convert the entire basement into like a gym studio and we'll train people here and that'll be that kind of thing. So yeah, that was kind of like the inspiration. For yeah. There's really any hiccups in converting your basement into some kind of studio, right? Like it's just, you just do it right. Smooth sailing. <laughs> yeah, man. Totally. Roommates yeah. won't say anything. It's fine. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Well, I'm curious kind of like how you see the the kind of distribution of roles in that, like, you know, you're putting in 50% of the work each maybe, but it looks like you're getting 100% of the on-screen credit. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I yeah. a little research, and if I'm not mistaken, 100% <laughs> of your media appearances have been you speaking for the company. Yeah, oh, yeah, that's absolutely The man right. of, the, of the business and the relationship. <laughs> that's right, yeah, the face and most good <laughs> yeah. so you yeah. go ahead and expand on that yeah well uh yeah well kelly <laughs> by saying the exact opposite is kind of implied exactly what's going on but mm. sam had sam uh does lots of the social networking social media kind of like stuff so she actually has really really awesome posts so you should check it out um and uh i uh <laughs> i do <laughs> none of the, none of it because <laughs> i I have a weird thing with social media. I don't really like it. Hey, fair enough. So it's poison. It, it is poison. I, I I truly believe that. But like, it uh, it's not inherently poison, but it's like yeah. used yeah. for poisonous, like for, oh, for boy, poison. Yeah. <laughs> so I mean, like, yeah, like you know, you, there's the internet is a deep dark place, but people can do good things on it. So Sam is definitely doing good things on it. But. So was it more of a situation where you were actually arguing about who? didn't have to come here and you lost because you weren't putting enough of the media time in. Uh, no, Sam just wanted to work out. <laughs> just wanted to work out. What the <laughs> yeah. fuck is wrong with you people? <laughs> yeah, it was fair. Yeah. I guess. I, well, I asked her this morning if she wanted to come and she was like, yeah, totally. And then we got busy and she was like, uh, no, I actually want to work out. I, th I think it was actually the moment where I gave her the character sheet. I'm like, here you go. Time to make a character for tonight. She's like, Ugh. you know what? Actually, I think I'm gonna go work out and be cool work out instead. instead of playing D and D. I was like, that's rude. There we go. Now we know. Stuff. That's the moment where our guests drop out. Is as soon as they find out they have to make a character. Yeah, uh, like, don't oh, worry. Oh. That doesn't that doesn't rip my heart out or anything. <laughs> I'm so sorry. It's okay. I'm actually not offended at all. Our, our jocks are jocks are incredibly cruel people. That's okay. Uh, I... Yeah, I mean that could be a good learning point for us because we've done a lot of the the tabletop role playing part of that equation, but not a lot of the being cool part of that. Yeah. So I don't know, maybe don't like, know, maybe you it... can kind of do some, some personal training on that right now. Like, can you coach us into being like less of embarrassing shit stains? <laughs> <laughs> like how do we I... go from being, but I like you guys that way. <laughs> the Belize? Cause I know you know how to do this. Oh yeah. I can, I can, I can switch. I'm gonna switch like that. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> If we're not embarrassing shit stains, whose lunch money is he going to steal? This is true. That's right. Uh, There's a hierarchy for a reason. I don't, know. I don't think any of you guys have extra cash to throw around. I feel, bad. I feel <laughs> bad if I robbed someone who had less money than me in, in their pocket right now. <laughs> Just yeah, I'm, I'm reminded of like that uh, that meme where it's like yeah, a, yeah. a robber shaking you awake. It's like, damn, bitch, you live like this? <laughs> yeah, 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 totally, yeah. He's like, give me all your money. He's like, this is all I got. This is all you have? That's all. You should have some savings, man. Like, you should take care of yourself. Here, take take this. Yeah. 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 Try to yeah. I got I you this card. It's for a financial advisor. Make the call. Yeah. Yeah. Come on, man. Just this is this is no way to live. So, I forgot what the initial question was. But... Uh, you know, I think it was more of a really lame attempt at a, at, at a gotcha because I did want to call you out for being a bully, but I did also want advice on how to do it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I really need that lunch money, man. <laughs> well, I mean, well, I've been seeing some of these, some of these nerds out there and they're getting uppity, you know, 
like the yeah and they're getting more popular too well you know? yeah i mean it's every problem. time i try to go to a movie you know it's all this nerd stuff yeah yeah it's, i know it's becoming mainstream and i i liked it better when it was uncool to be a nerd because i felt very at home in it you know like oh right it really and allowed I... me to feed into my self-hating complex right and when all of a sudden we have a lot of acceptance right around you know around being into weird things or being into things that like are a little you know are a little silly you know people are running around fighting crime in their pajamas like what like i'm having to go to increasing lengths to continue these like toxic internal narratives about why i suck right this is this is my problem with it, it sounds like you were also being a weeb i think it's been working out for josh yeah it's working great for me i get to <laughs> not only do i get to not only do i get type of nerd i get to i get to hate myself and i get to hate marvel so mm -hmm. it's like a win-win situation oh, yeah. everyone loves that yeah right yeah. Well, Nicole, I didn't say I want to be a pervert. <laughs> I just I am just... one. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, like, some are, you know, some are born perverted, some achieve perversion, some have perversion thrust upon them. <laughs> <laughs> and boy, have I had a lot of perversion thrust upon me recently. By whom? I mean, by yourself. Mostly, yourself doesn't count. Mostly Josh. I That's mean, oh, okay, yeah. You know, when it's not here's the latest anime you should be watching it's here's my extremely troubling mug that i went and got custom made <laughs> i spent so much money on this how much was the mug i think with shipping it was almost 40 dollars. like what's really disconcerting I mean... about this mug is that you set it down in front of me um so that i can just think about <laughs> what it implies about him but he's not drinking anything out of it no it's just yeah you prop. oh is it gonna be like a it's like a holographic charizard it's <laughs> like it's yeah. never gonna be used no no it's my the only mug in my house everywhere. all i have mm -hmm. i had to, i made tea the other day and realized i didn't have a mug and i had to use a mason jar oh fuck yeah yeah <laughs> i mean well actually it's not the only mug in your house it's there's still no mugs in your house there's still it's no mug in my <laughs> He's got to bring that everywhere. He doesn't have friends over to his house because of the pandemic. So he's got to bring it with him everywhere yeah, he goes. Right. So everyone can see the mug you just How made. How poison my mind is that I'm like, this will be hilarious. And, and that you own a mug. And then I also have to yeah. explain the joke to literally every person I show it to. So. And for anyone watching, yeah, do you want to, do you want to be see able it? to read Josh's mug, all oh, you yeah. have to do is start supporting us. By, oh, oh there no, you, you can read it. Yeah, there oh, it is, damn. right there. Yeah. So, yes, <laughs> ladies in the audience. Well, now I, I prioritize have, fishing. Now I have no way of pitching to people that they should give us money so we can pay for HD streaming and streaming. I was about to say, just uh, oh, just right. join the Discord for more of my incredibly hot takes and monologues <laughs> that you won't see here. Mm -hmm. We got a spicy mug at this point. Mm -hmm. And Paige will just throw a link to the Discord right in the bottom of the screen. We can move on. Uh, Nicole, did you have any questions for Bria? Um, yeah, actually, I was wondering, so I'm assuming you have lots of, like, before and after pictures of, like, people that are, like, going through your training programs. Um, nope. Do you, I, I was wondering, so we're looking for ways to fundraise for the show, obviously. Would you be yeah. willing to donate that as, like, part of the content that we could, like, give people if they sponsor our show? Like, this little secret hidden, like, half-naked people in varying degrees of their, like, success story? Or... <laughs> Uh, I actually, I don't really have any of them. Um, Most of the photos I he don't. takes when training clients are of, like, the obscure variety, if I recall. So. <laughs> Man. <laughs> the well, short variety? Dude, <laughs> Rude. Uh, no, uh, no, I don't know. We, like, uh, one thing that I personally suck at is marketing. Um, I have to get better at it, I know. But, I don't know. Um, trying to do this business kind of on my terms uh which i don't know like i don't i'm really like coercing people into training i've seen saw a lot of that at the gyms i don't like um uh i really don't i don't actually usually sign contracts with people unless they want one for their own protection because i don't want to like keep them or anything like that and uh i generally tell people like not to weigh themselves and not to like really take pictures or anything like that um and just to go by like purely subjective metrics like how how do you look when you look at yourself? How do you feel? You know, so more of like so a I, positivity thing than like yeah. obviously like results are part of the factor, but it's more of like 
look when someone's happy, that's when they're achieving the results you're more yeah. interested in. Like, yeah, like I think of like a state of like uh health strength well-being functionality it's like it's it's experienced subjectively you know it's not like um uh like someone might look at you and be like hey you look great and you're like oh well thanks i've been working on it right mm -hmm. but like the uh uh right. how how you feel like um like getting stuck under a table and mm -hmm. stuff like that or being able to do the things that you love to do with like no impotence or like a challenge is like thrown at you and you can just like do it because like you know you're, you're strong and you feel well. Your joints don't hurt. Um, your injury is Wait, better. Joints cannot hurt. It's, yeah, it's totally possible. <laughs> can, you, can you expand on that one? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's just like the opposite. You know when joints hurt? Yeah. It's like that stops and it's like the opposite. It's like it feels like when you're asleep. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It's like that. You know how you feel no pain when you're asleep? Well, okay. So you're saying that like it's like when I'm asleep, but all the time. So like my whole yeah. life will just be like a twenty-four hour stream of like extremely anxious dreams where I fail a lot. Yeah, and that's like I mean that is our capitalist uh, hellscape. Yeah, yes. yeah. I mean like that's just like being awake, man. I don't know. Uh, it's, yeah, it's interesting. That's an interesting take on like I because I, I I agree. I think that that's what fitness should be about. But I'm just like, and I know there's like I'm sure there's like some sort of like transition point in your life or something but like i'm just picturing like you as a high school bully but also being body positive like uh, how how did that work no, how... no no definitely those were not by the way man you're valid <laughs> Thank you. You scrawny piece of shit. Let me show you how to work out a little bit, make you feel a little better about yourself. Yeah, you like that? Yeah? Huh? <laughs> And it, it was junior high, actually. That's when I was bullied. Uh, fair enough. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I feel like we're all bullies at one point in our point in our lives. Even if you are the bullied, you become a bully. Oh, that, that was yeah. exactly what happened. Yeah, yeah. no, yeah. It, it all friends in yeah. elementary. Got pop like switch schools. Got popular in junior high. You go, yes. you go just yes. explodes. Yeah. yeah, you're like, yeah. I am ready. I am to, God. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I am ready to subject people to the worst pain of their life. Yeah, exactly. So, mm -hmm. and then um, and then in high school, I stopped being a bully. And that's a pretty good transistor like, like transistor period though because like most people like pretty good transistor period you shut up yeah <laughs> words are hard and i'm already three beers deep uh <laughs> this tabletop is gonna go great oh i'm excited um, I love drum dms they're great uh because i know that like a lot of people start as bullies as a child and just uh never develop so really you're you're ahead of the curve yeah yeah yeah, yeah. i think so i don't know it was good though it was like honestly the the thing that uh, helped a lot was uh, just like doing drugs in high school. That helped. There we go. <laughs> like, that, uh, do drugs like, in high school. Yeah. Official uh, stance. Drugs are a good thing. Uh, I don't know. That's exactly <laughs> what I'm saying. Uh, uh, Every time I try to go and do drugs in a high school, they're like, "Who are you? Wait, <laughs> name tag? Like, are you, you? You don't look like the right age unless you're. They, they, sometimes I can convince them that he, I'm a PE yeah. teacher. Um, a trench coat is very unbecoming. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, like, like things like that. It's, it's so much hassle to do drugs in a high school. Like, um, personally, I, I find it's much easier to kind of just like do drugs within view of a high school. Um, as long yeah, as I mean, we all got to, um, you know, <laughs> compromise on our dreams yeah. sometimes. <laughs> so yeah, it's, mm. it's all good. But it, it was it was just uh, smoking weed. Smoking no. weed. Like I Fair like I like. It, it totally had a, like a uh, like a sedating effect on me, and it still does. Yes, it's like I know some people can do it and be like, "All right, here we go. I'm gonna clean my room and make make me make music or do other stuff." For me, I'm just like, I'm gonna just veg for a little yeah, while. Yeah, totally. <laughs> but it, like, just give me a chance to like slow down, stop, and think, and just be like, "Yo, man, I should like, stop being a dick. <laughs> should I stop being a dick?" <laughs> like, I'm I'm entertaining the possibility of doing that. <laughs> That's fair. Like so the way to stop reason. people from being kids from being bullies is to totally incapacitate them with weed, is what you're saying. Yeah, well, KO the bullies. Yeah, just yeah. Yeah. them. Yeah, I'm into All it. Right. I think we have some uh, policy recommendations for our government now. Yeah, you, mm -hmm. everyone quote me on that. Uh, <laughs> Sedate yeah, the children with our <laughs> here. So what I'm getting at so far, I want to get fit. Like, first off, it's going to involve beer and pizza. I know, right? This is a great environment for me to be uh, like, yeah, you just be healthy. <laughs> yeah, and take a lot of sedatives. Yeah. <laughs> well, because when you think about it, if you're if you're really sedentary, yeah, then 
you're not burning as many calories, so you don't eat as much, so you won't get fat. Uh, you know, you just kind of maintain this steady state of just like the neutral, neutral calories in, yeah. neutral out. <laughs> yeah, you the just, more yeah. you start moving, the more you have to start doing calculus on how to like eat enough to balance it out because no one wants to starve to death. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's. I'm I mean, you. then you, then you could be all over the place. But if you're just kind of mostly a puddle, like you can get very you can get really predictable in your routines and just kind of like subsist on like water, apples, and dextrin. Right. Yeah, I'm very like interested in like what body of literature is like. What, what is the the root uh, philosophy from? Where, where did this come from? Um, mostly whatever is most convenient for me. For me. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> so. It's the, the, yeah, there's a bit of uh, of survivor bias there, but I've found nothing more <laughs> effective than just checking out from reality for as long of periods as possible and kind of just forgetting to eat. And, you know, I, I mean, look, look at this temple. <laughs> yeah. So, but it's like one of those temples in Thailand where like the monkeys are running around and like shitting all over the place. Start on those fucking monkeys. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Look, one of them I don't know if there's a cigarette a, and it's really funny. Sorry? So one of them smokes a cigarette and it's really funny. <laughs> oh, look at him. Nice. He's like squatting like a slob. Exactly. <laughs> my people. Yeah. <laughs> nice, bro. Yeah, but they also like raided my... I mean, these weren't Thai monkeys. These were Malaysian monkeys. It might be a whole different like monkey culture. But all they did was like raid up my like bike and they chewed up the seat and they stole oh, yeah. my water bottle and... You know, they took away my trans swim trunks. <laughs> nice. Like, oh. And you're like naked in the ocean and yeah. you had to like go so, back to the classic water. prank. Monkeys, <laughs> nice bro. <laughs> oh, Monkeys have watched enough like eighties college comedies that they're yeah, like, exactly. This is hilarious. We'll steal their clothes when they're in the water. See you prom nerd. <laughs> <laughs> now they have to walk home naked. <laughs> Yeah, see, that, that's the problem with me trying to integrate monkeys into my fitness journey is that I still just ended up as the recipient of bullying. So it's I'm falling into those same old patterns. This is why I'm trying to break the pattern by figuring out, like, if I can't bully monkeys, like, who can I bully? This is what I'm trying to get to. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I, I think probably jocks. Jocks. Yeah. Come, coming up it's yeah. about their turn. I think it's I about think. their co-opted. Yeah. It's like now that everyone's getting into like stuff like marvel and star wars now like you could just yeah yeah be shitty to jocks now yeah like they're like oh you like star wars you're like you yeah don't? like everyone <laughs> yeah god what's with you yeah or or yeah it's like they like but jocks can be nerds too i guess but i i, I know what you mean yeah. yeah yeah but if i'm trying to bully people in order to get fit and then oh I as in oh. <laughs> yeah is that how you get fit because my fitness yeah. journey so far yeah, it's called is... rage fit drugs, alcohol, and pizza, which, like, I feel like there has to be a little exercise. In it. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, like, that's, I'm having a beer right now. I had some pizza, too. Right. I'm not, like, a keto person who's just, like, you know, you know keto is the most unscientific yeah. diet in the entire world. Don't do it. But, um, but th there could be a reason why you would want to do it. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. It's, like, it's just, like, I, I don't want my life completely dominated by like fitness. It's definitely a component component of like what I do and who I am. Um, but yeah, I mean, there's still room for beer and like pizza and stuff like that. As long as it's like, you know, well balanced. balanced. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Cause like taking pizza and beer out of your life, it's like, great. I was barely happy already. And now <laughs> you took away pizza and beer. What the fuck, man? So yeah. So you, you said that keto is the most unscientific diet you can take. How do you feel about the carnivore diet? Oh, well, that's <laughs> completely backed by science. And, uh, uh, I mean, a, a doctor does it, guys. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's the godfather of logic. You can't, you can't. A doctor's, a psychologist's daughter did it, so. That's right. We should note that uh, you should probably just not eat meat all the time. You might die. Yeah, just or clear. become addicted to benzos. Please don't. There seems to be like a connection here. Mm -hmm. Right, yeah. You're stuffing the, the benzos in the steak. Good. See, this is why I've never been good at working out, is it's like, oh, the weed's good, but the benzos are bad. Like, it's so... Confusing. <laughs> yeah, it's like, and what I do I know, do, I what do like, I not? I feel like that might be the benzos. <laughs> <laughs> and then that answers the question, like, oh, yeah, I already did the benzos. <laughs> yeah. Pizza time. Yeah. 
like, <laughs> I guess I should get a fitness journal and log when I've done the benzos, and maybe it'd be easier to kind of track my progress or my regress. Yeah, and like the days too. <laughs> right. Yeah. Totally. Uh, uh, so these are the yeah, things I can never figure on my own. Oh man, that thing is wild. I'm actually. I, I read today. It's such a crazy thing. With headlines and science oh. studies, you should always take this with a grain of salt. But they're like intermittent fasting might not be all that it's meant to be, and I didn't know it was really a thing to begin with. I just am lazy <laughs> and only yeah. eat once a day because it's cheap, and I only get hungry once a day. Yeah, and they're like it's uh, it could be you're losing weight at the same rate as someone who eats normally. I'm like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I, I actually like intermittent fasting because I'm the same way. I only get really, I only really get hungry once a day, and it's like in the evening. Yeah, exactly, right. And uh, I have an appetite problem, but like, I was just like, I was doing it all like my entire life. I just didn't know. Yeah, you didn't like, have a term for it. I yeah. just thought it was forgetting to eat. Yeah, to not the having aspiration enough, of my friends. Yeah, not having enough money to buy food. God, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was <laughs> for a while. If I buy less food, I'm intermittent fasting. Not I can it. buy more beer in university. <laughs> Yeah. I yeah, read. I saw a meme once that was like only a millennials would turn would be able to, or millennials are amazing. Only they would be able to turn skipping breakfast into intermittent fasting, yeah, and totally. like make it like a fitness wellness thing rather than like yeah. just a hey you're I shitty and you woke up too late to make anything. Yeah. <laughs> so how is this? Is like a really hacky kind of maybe like '90s stand-up joke. Yeah, only get hungry once a day you know, roughly the time between uh, when I wake up and when I go to sleep. Yeah, that's like yeah, a joke book yeah. level thing from Jackbox, like, where you're just like, please, uh, <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, the totally. worst game of Jackbox, please never play this again. I mean, people love Jackbox. I, I do love Jackbox. I they, oh, I love Jackbox. They have so much cringe in it sometimes, though. So. I don't like joke, oh, no, their newest game has created a special brand of horrible with me and my friends, like, oh, yeah. like where I feel like the FBI might be get called one of these which, days. Which one is that? Uh, it's called Job Job, and you... That is incorrect take. Anyways, uh, <laughs> you get prompts and you just word vomit out there and yeah. they take this word vomit, mix it all up, and then everyone gets a mixture of this and ask you new questions. Okay, yeah. yeah so it's like, like a king's cup of word vomit? It basically, so it'll be yes. like, you'll get a question of like, what is your opinion on oh, God. giving yeah, your just... friends laxatives? Yeah, yeah. And you just fucking just... Mm, nail it up like a random coherent incoherent sentence yeah and then they mix it up make it less coherent than even that are you and trying then, like yeah. jumble it yeah they, yeah they all jumble it together yeah. and then someone will get a question of just like um in the office frank keeps stealing your food what do you do about it and you'll get mixes of like three different people's sentences yeah and they try to make a sentence out of that and it gets very weird very very, very, fast. very fast yes yeah. nice <laughs> i do love yeah no just Taking Jackbox is like a very like wholesome like hey, yeah, yeah. And just in, in, injecting foul like yeah. terribleness into injecting it. adults into it, which yeah, is yeah, the worst thing yeah. you can do. Exactly. Uh, yeah, I love Jackbox. I mean, I would never. I always play it straight. You play it straight. Yeah, I profanity don't, I don't, filter I don't on. Even going blue comedically, I'm always shooting for the top shelf. Yeah, no. I, is there a yeah. stage below blue collar comedy? Is uh, that what going blue means? I would assume so. I mean, it all depends where you come from, too. Like, going blue in the States would be, like, Democrat? Yeah, I feel like it has different origins, but I've never looked into it. I mean, I always thought it was white-collar and blue-collar, just, like, crime. Whereas white-collar crime is the stuff that is super lame and you should never do. And blue-collar crime is super fun. Mm. Like, like insurance. Like, like, not paying your insurance for, like, six months and hoping you still have it. Or blowing up a refrigerator with tannerite or something like that, you know. Yeah, those are all. Is that a crime? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I expect that blowing explosives up in your yard is probably illegal somewhere. But is it a crime? I mean, <laughs> most crimes are just imposed on us by the states. Yeah, that's right. Uh, I, for one, think that everyone should be able to blow up tannerite in their backyards. Yeah. As long like, as you're yeah. in your backyard. Yeah. Like, you can't fuck up your neighbor's yards or fence, but if you want to fuck up your own yard, man, that's your shit. Yeah. And My specifically, when I, I agree. I agree, <laughs> but when I say yard, I mean, like, farm yard. I don't mean, well, like, yeah. I live in the city, and I, there's, like, a picket fence on either side, and I, like, blow shit up in between. I feel like that gets a little dicey, but I agree. As long as explosions contain to your front saying, yeah. yard. I'm just saying, as long as you, you just have to do yard. a little, little one. Just a that's little fair. Toy. I guess Those I little cap gun explosives. To me is that as the the basement renter, I don't get access to the backyard. 
and like where do i get to blow shit up well this is why private property is theft so you're kind of because <laughs> i can't pitching, blow like, up shit because i can't blow up my neighbor's yard yeah Yes, so like we I love need more it. public spaces in which to blow shit. I feel like I just recruited oh, yeah. a lot of communists if they get a hold of that clip. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I can blow up tannery to my neighbor's yard if we just reclaim all land. Nice. <laughs> I mean, I feel like there's room to have our own yard, but you know, to back on to like you know, it's like a dog park where you say, Okay, this is the area that's off leash for everyone. <laughs> and then like, here's the tannery right area. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully not next week. I was gonna say it should <laughs> yeah. be like an enclave, like it should be in the middle of the dog park. Yeah. Oh, so like the dogs can watch? Well, yeah. Yeah. I mean, well, dogs love explosions. If, if there's one thing, yeah, I was going to say, if there's anything that the New York, or the New York, the uh, New Year's fireworks show is telling me, it's that pets love fireworks. Oh, yeah, they love it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And like, I mean, I have to walk my dog and I have to blow up a fridge. <laughs> like, oh, two it's, birds, it's busy one stone. Yeah. Yeah. Because, right. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you know, like if, if I don't blow up a fridge twice a day, I'm shitting on the floor, right? It's it's very much like a dog situation. It's the <laughs> only thing that controls my IBS. <laughs> blowing up refrigerators in the right. dog park. Or even just something like broadly cold will kind of tide me over when we're short on fridges. That's fair. Like like a wine cooler or something like that. Yeah, yeah. Which yeah. I feel like is still a fridge, but just has a different label. Yeah. Yeah, just like a yeah you're hey, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, we saw that, right? so we do. We sh- we should get back to the workout questions. Yes. While you do that, I'm gonna go grab some here. more grains. <laughs> a healthy part of the yeah, yeah. Exactly. the food so, pyramid. Yeah. Uh, I mean, well, I mean, I had nutrition explained to me in first grade, and I've never really needed to know since. I just remember lots of grains, yeah, lots of know, three right? other things. Dairy. Mm-hmm. So much fucking dairy in that yeah. that pyramid. Check. I'm looking yeah. at this pizza. <laughs> we got the veggies. There's no meat. Fine. You know. No meat, yeah. But uh, like, because I, I don't know what your relationship to all of your clients is, but I can extrapolate based... Strict, strictly sexual. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah. So, because I'm... Well, I, 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 can can only, I can only extrapolate based on the workout experiences I've had with you and then think, okay, what is it like to do that, you know, full time for your living? So my question in terms of your interaction with your clients is like, how do you, how do you kind of manage the kind of near constant whining and putting <laughs> off of doing the next set? Uh, that is true. That is what it's like to train with you. But um, yeah. uh, I, I'm just, man, I've, set, got, like, you know? I've got such a positive relationship with all my clients. Like they're all my friends, like especially over the past year, I've seen them more than my actual friends. Mm-hmm. And like, I don't know. We have a great really like. I don't know. I really try and entice people with like excitement and fun and stuff like that. It's mm-hmm. like, yes, some would say that this is like a a thing you have to drag yourself through and like, uh, it's a uh, like generally unpleasant and uncomfortable or whatever. Yeah. Um. I I personally I love it, but like, um, the the camaraderie of like having a trainer and like having this like friendship. Like for me, I would say they're, they are my friends. Uh, it, it does like make them excited to be there and like do the things and stuff like that. And like when I get excited for them, like they get excited for themselves, you know, because we have like a close ish type of relationship. Mm-hmm. So and... at the point where a client becomes your friend, is that they essentially mean like you kind of stop answering your phone, you stop, <laughs> like you just kind of generally check yeah. out and. Like, does that kind of, is it sort of like a self-limiting relationship in that way? It's like, well, you know, now this person is just like time, on the back. Time to, time to go some. Yeah. The <laughs> client is now my friend, which means to see them less than my clients. Now I have time. To I can be client. rude to them and like, you know. I think the important lesson to be learned here is how do you get your friends to pay you to hang out with them? Become a thing. Totally yeah, yeah. It's exactly it, yeah. Cracked and like, probably you should write a book on this. Because that, that was like. Essentially, my entire young adult life, it was just like working out with my friends. And now I've monetized that. And hey, why not, right? Well, what's that uh, term? Uh, if you do what you love, you'll never work a day in your life. Yeah, man. I, I really do feel that way when I'm like training people. It's like, I was like, oh, I get it. Yeah, yeah it's, it makes like, sense it's actually now. fun. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, but so, I only, only because I'm doing it for myself. Yeah, that no. is the biggest, biggest thing, too. It's like, 
Uh, it was not fun when I was doing it at LA Fit because I was like, I am getting fucked. Like, yeah, it is, everyone, everyone's getting fucked here. Everyone's getting fucked here. Yeah, yeah except for well, like, like you said, it was an inherently sexual relationship. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah exactly. Is my yeah. question. <laughs> I became more selfish. I was doing it for myself. You know. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Yeah. No. So it feels like as a as a personal trainer, you kind of have the same relationship that you would. Um, like if your clients were like if you were a counselor and your clients were like your counseling clients, Dude, except for you yeah. don't have to like have all those boundaries in place. You can just like go as far as you want with like being their friend and like getting into their personal lives and like. Yeah, man. I was gonna say great. like part of this job is to I'm totally a fucking counselor to some of these people, which I'm not qualified to do at all. But like, uh, like people they like on on the first day of training I'm just be like chatting, working out, and just like yeah, man, like my uh like fucking yeah. kid is like doing all this weird shit and i like i don't like my kid i'm like whoa, whoa, whoa. i mean holy and like uh it's, I, I think it's also because like i like i don't know them and like i don't know anyone they know and like they'll just like tell me everything and i'm just like what? whoa crazy fuck. i think i think fitness coaches are up there with like like my mom's a hairdresser my sister's a hairdresser and i know a bunch yes of totally yeah exactly and I feel like man. those are like the big three of like non-counselor counselors mm -hmm. like my sister and my mom have given me like not stories per se but just like general vibes just like oh yeah you're absolutely a therapist once they're in that chair like yeah yeah and like it's, i'm not trying to like do that but yeah, like no, no, it uh, but it's just like people it happens. yeah and that's okay yeah. it's like a bartender like Nobody, nobody, no bartender goes into this being like, I cannot wait to counsel some people today. Yeah. But eventually, a guy's <laughs> gonna come in there, drink half a bottle of Fireball, and start crying, and be know? like, my, my, my wife. Yeah. Ah. Exactly. <laughs> I think probably like the thing about all those places is it's like the one place that you can. It's one of the places that you can go to focus on yourself. You're entirely alone with another person. You're yeah. like going there for. I mean. Arguably self care, self care. I don't know about the bartender thing, but like maybe people need time away. But like you're arguably going there for self care. You're going there to focus on yourself, and I feel like it probably like brings up a lot of emotions. Like, you know, when I go to my hairdresser, I'm like, wow, it's been a long time since I've spent money on myself, and like felt like really good at like like I feel really good about how I look, and I like how this person makes me feel about myself, and so like I'm gonna want to yeah. talk to them more about these things. So, yeah, they totally just like, volunteer like that. Yeah. Yeah, and it's and a like, natural a hairdresser, and then you don't know... you have to? Have... <laughs> <laughs> there he is. From further back, past experience. <laughs> there's that junior high bully. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, he knew he was somewhere. You son of a bitch. <laughs> so what I meant to say was when I used to go to the hairdresser, right, yeah, and gotcha. then they would keep dressing my hair until I got really dizzy and I had to put my head down between my knees in the corner for a while. Like it, it's extremely similar to working out. Wait, what? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I totally missed it. What? Well, I had this really good art for a joke planned and then you kind of just completely came up and just like spiked the ball back into my corner. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, no, but I was, I was oh, going to be funny. Thing. I'm sorry, man. Yeah. Oh, you? Sorry. Were you yeah. trying to say something and someone fucking interrupted you with a shitty joke about what you're saying? Huh. <laughs> for, yeah, you know, this, this happened <laughs> last night while we were chatting. I'm just being spiteful. Yeah, you know what? Well, that's that's a fair point, Nicole. I did interrupt your story last night. If you wanted to finish it now, you could absolutely do that. that that's okay. We, I'm not feeling vulnerable enough to be able to bring that joke up again because Kelly fucking roasted me the first thing I said. So. <laughs> I would never. <laughs> so, okay. I think it's time. But, Nicole, it's your show. Should we transition? Sure, it should be transistor, as Josh would say. <laughs> yeah, I think transition. It it fucking it, sucks. It is Josh's <laughs> game, so I think we should use Josh's terminology. And I would love to transistor into a, into a game. Transistor.